It's pretty wild to say that I've been using the Apple Vision Pro for an entire month. That said, since giving my initial review, there have been some changes to the headset experience via new apps and software upgrades on Apple's end, as well as some features I'm surprised that I find myself using more than others. Let's talk about it. The biggest difference in my Vision Pro experience from the start through now is the amount of apps that have been added. There's now over 1,000 Vision Pro apps, and these are some of the ones I've been using most. Split Screen is probably my favorite Vision Pro app so far because it answers one of my biggest complaints about using my Mac inside the headset. This app gives you a second desktop to go along with Apple's own virtual display feature. You can do some serious multitasking on this thing. The only bummer is that it's 1080p and not 4K like Apple's. TikTok is designed from the ground up for the Vision Pro and lets you browse videos that float in front of your view. It's easy to pull up comments and you can add your own via the floating keyboard. Black Box for Vision Pro is a very cool game because it lets you solve puzzles by poking bubbles and capturing objects in front of you. The game itself is not as addictive as others I've tried, but it shows what's possible with various gestures. My favorite thing to do with the Vision Pro is watch movies, including 3D movies. While it's cool how Apple's immersive video format literally puts you in the room with Alicia Keys or on the top of a mountain with an adventurer, 3D movies are here right now. Apple has over 150 3D titles you can watch through Apple TV+, and the Disney Plus app has close to 50 3D movies of its own. I got sucked in watching Avengers Infinity War, and I would argue that the level of depth beats the movie theater, especially for major action scenes. Even if you're not into 3D, you'll enjoy watching shows and movies through the Vision Pro. I watched Oppenheimer and it looked amazing, and The Last of Us was somehow even more immersive. Needless to say, I needed to take a break after that. Despite promises that the Vision Pro will make you more productive, I don't think it's a game changer I wanted it to be. It's cool to pin various windows around your space, and at least when I'm working from home, I find myself more engaged when I work in the Vision Pro with my Mac desktop floating in front of me, Slack off to one side, and Apple Music off to another. But there's some things that keep pulling me out of my comfort zone. For one, the Vision Pro is too heavy to wear for over an hour or two while sitting up. That's even if you switch from the solo knit band to the comfier dual loop band right here. I'd say this band is a must because it better balances the weight of the headset, but I don't like wearing it because frankly, it messes up my hair and I have a sensitive scalp. In fact, after a while, I get a sore neck using the Vision Pro and I feel some pressure around my eyes. And then there's carrying around the Vision Pro it adds a ton of weight to my bag to the point where I have to really think twice about bringing it home from work or into the office. If there's one thing I misjudged about the Vision Pro, it's the battery. Yes, obviously I wish that you didn't have to schlep one around, but when you're using the Vision Pro, you can just slip the battery into your pocket or just place it on the desk next to you when you're sitting and plug it in for continuous power. It's not nearly as annoying as I thought it would be. I also misjudged the environments on Apple Vision Pro. At first, I thought they were just fancy desktops, but they do add a level of immersion to the Vision Pro that can literally take you anywhere in the world. It's not a replacement for real travel, of course, but I really like that third-party apps are doing their own environments like the Iron Throne Room in the Max app and the Avengers Tower in the Disney Plus app. In terms of what's missing from the Apple Vision Pro, I'd say that the lack of Netflix is still a big one. You technically can get to it through Safari, but it's not optimal, and you can't download things to watch when you're not on Wi-Fi. The bigger missing ingredient for me is Google. There's no YouTube, and no Gmail, and no Google Docs, and no Google Meet. Yes, I can access these services through the MacBook virtual display feature, but I still can't attend meetings through Google Meet using my digital persona. Speaking of which, it's nice that I can use my persona to attend meetings and it's impressive that it can mimic things like my blinks and smirks, but it's still creepy. And I don't know how much better it's going to get once it exits beta. How many other people will accept this as a normal video call, especially for business? When I first tried Vision Pro, I summed it up in a few words. Amazing, immersive, and pricey. I stand by those words, but now that I've been using it for a month, I'll add three more. Entertaining, heavy, and a bit lonely. At $3,500, this is still a tough sell for most, but I do think the Vision Pro is paving its own path in the mixed reality headset category. Not everyone is ready to come along for the ride, and that's okay. For me, personally, I'm excited to see where Apple and developers take this next when it comes to spatial games and also reimagining how we watch live sports. Even if you can't afford one, or you're just not ready to commit to the world of spatial computing, I don't blame you. But you owe it to yourself to try the Vision Pro on at an Apple store or borrow one from a friend like me to get a taste of what the future is like.
Be sure to follow all of our Apple Vision Pro coverage on Tom'sGuide.com and follow us on all of our social channels, including YouTube and TikTok. For Tom's Guide, this is Mark Spoonauer.